Hello, everyone. We have been preparing for our personal narratives. Uh, by now, you should know very well, a personal narrative is, an, uh, it's about an event that happened in your life, a very emotional event that has a life lesson. It's personal narratives are gonna be very, very different from all of the writing that we've done previously. We've done expository and persuasive writing. And in those types of writing, we had a lot of facts, um, main ideas and supporting details. And that's the way everything was structured. You had a thesis statement, main idea, supporting details, main idea, supporting details, main idea, supporting details. And then you wrapped it all up with your thesis. A personal narrative is not like that at all. It is a story. So it's going to have a lot of emotion. It's going to be a lot of showing. That's why we've done so much work with um, figurative language, um, sensory details, uh, just because this type of writing is so, so different. You have to show these things to your writer. You do not, or your reader, you do not want to be telling them things. Uh, we talked the other day about how our story should not be flat. It should be like a roller coaster. That was the metaphor we used the other day. Today, we're going to use the metaphor of like a mountain. All right. If you've ever seen, or if you think about mountain climbers, it takes a really long time to get to the top. And once they get to the climax or the top, the peak, it's like euphoric. And then they quickly descend and they go home. All right. So today our plot diagram, we're using the metaphor of a mountain. All right. We know in plot, there is the exposition, the rising action, the climax, the falling action, the resolution. In the exposition, you're not going to come out in your story and say, set, the setting is, the characters are. Don't you dare do that, okay? You're going to start your story with an incident, a conflict, some type of tension that's going to make the story interesting and get it moving. That the exposition is important though, because it gets us thinking about where does this take place? Well, my story is mostly going to take place at school and then part of it will be at a basketball game. The situation that I'm dealing with in this story is I'm not school. Do I make the right choice or do I make the easy choice? That's my situation. All right, the characters are myself, Sister Dorothy and my mom. Of course, there are background characters, but they're not the main characters. These are my main characters. <clears throat> and we've talked about how there needs to be a change in emotion. So mine's going to go from good to awful to good. So the beginning is kind of good. Uh, then it gets really bad. And at the end, it, it's good again. Okay. I kind of live happily ever after. All right. So I'm going to have my conflict and my conflict is going to be an inner struggle. We've, we've done some activities the past couple of uh, last week that dealt with conflict. We know about protagonists and antagonists. Well, I'm not really conflicted with anyone else in my story. I'm conflicted with myself. I have to make the right choice. So the protagonist is me and the antagonist is also myself. So it is an inner struggle that I'm dealing with. All right. So that's going to kind of get the, the ball rolling. Now we know when we're developing our story, the, the longest part is going to be our rising action because we have to kind of put everything into place. All right, so my story, um, the rising action, I'm new at school, I wanna fit in, I'm doing well, except for math, all right? And then my second event, I see all the cool kids, they're copying. Um, they're copying math homework. They're all getting along. They're having fun. I want to fit in. And guess what? They included me. I didn't even have to ask. And then I'm fitting in. And 
they tell me, hey, you don't, you don't need to worry about this. You can copy the math. We've got it. All right. And I think that kind of solves my problem. I'm fitting in. I don't have to worry about the math. Or do I? I, I know it doesn't feel right. Something about this doesn't feel right. So I'm sitting down with my friends and I'm eating my snack and all is well with the world. I have the homework, it's being passed down. I don't have to worry about anything. Eating my snack, finally everybody has had their turn to copy it. It's my turn to copy it as I'm eating my snack. I look over my shoulder and lo and behold, who do I see but Sister Dorothy and I know I have been caught. All right, so that's my rising action. Is this everything that I'm going to write in my story? No, these are just my notes. You can see I'm doing a lot of telling here. When I start writing my story, I'm going to do a lot more showing so that you can picture what's going on. All right, so we're done with the rising action, okay? I have been caught. I'm at the climax now. Uh-oh, what's going to happen? Well, Sister Dorothy calls my mom. My mom tells sister, don't you let that girl get, get on the bus. She's staying at school. I'll be there to pick her up. And this is where I think, oops, that's a good place, the climax. If you're thinking about where you want to use dialogue, this is where you probably want to infuse it, at the climax. It's a good place. And that keeps you from having diarrhea of the dialogue. We don't want our whole story to be dialogue. All right? So at this point, it's just sister and I in the room. And that's when I realized, you know, this was really stupid. I could have avoided all this trouble had I just done the right thing. I knew copying that wasn't right. And as I'm sitting there and I'm realizing this, my mom comes in, Sister Dorothy, who's very tiny, can't get her off of me. She's beating me. She doesn't stop until she's exhausted. And sister's upset and distraught. I'm crying. My mom's really upset and angry because we've been taught not to do things like that. So the falling action, all right, this quickly is going to end here. So we go home, I'm crying, I'm punished, I'm banished to my room, I'm humiliated. I knew what I did was wrong. I don't have anyone to blame for this except for myself. Uh, and then next, my mom tells me, that after the horrible thing I did, and even though I'm punished and banished to my room, I'm going to my basketball game, which is so out of character for my parents. And my mom really has to force me to go to the game because I'm so upset. Well, I find out years later that it's all Sister Dorothy's doing because she wants to check on me. She's really worried about me. And I don't find this out until years later. And while I'm at the game, I see all of the nuns in the stands. And they're my own personal cheering section. And it was such a horrible day. I had the, it kind of carried over into my game. I'm pretty sure we lost. And I, I just stunk up the court. I played horrible. All right. But it doesn't end there. The next day, Sister Dorothy pulls me aside. She tells me she's going to help me. Um, she knows why I did what I did. Um, and she helps me, helps me to understand math. But not only that, she teaches me a life lesson. And she said, you know, you did, you did a bad thing. It was a mistake. But it's only bad if you keep doing it over and over. Hopefully you've learned from that. So we all make mistakes and we need to learn from them. And she also wanted me to know, I need not be afraid if I don't understand something. I should be asking for help because if I don't, then the only person I'm hurting is myself. 
Okay. So those are two really important life lessons that she taught me. Now you can see when you look down at my theme, I'll keep disappearing. When you look down at my theme, I have multiple themes. And remember, um, we said, if you can, mul if you can identify multiple themes in a story, you're not just a three and you can support them with details, then you've moved to a four. Well, in my story, I have that we all make mistakes and we need to learn from them. Don't be afraid to ask for help when you need it. And doing something the easy way doesn't always make it right. So I have three different themes. Am I going to come out and tell these themes? I don't I, I don't know. I'm the two kind of go in with the resolution. So I might mention those at the end, but doing something the easy way doesn't always make it right. I think I'm going to let the, the reader come to that conclusion. All right. So my title for this story, I think I'm going to call it the math lesson, but I'm not sure. Um, remember, we talked about figurative language. If you want to use alliteration, this is a good place to use it in your title. The author is myself. This is a personal narrative. If you need help with your plot diagram, reach out. You see that I'm talking through this. I can tell you this took me a while and I've talked through this a couple of times. This didn't just come real easy. And we are going to have Monday and Tuesday to work on this. I won't be assigning a new assignment. Tuesday is going to be a catch-up day. So if you need help, you can reach out to Mr. Nets and I on Monday. We will also be having at 2 to 2.30 uh, meet. So if you want to meet with us, you can. If you can't get in the meet, then reach out for help and uh, we'll, we'll see if we can help you. I won't be around on Tuesday, so reach out on Tuesday to Mr. Nets. Good luck with your plot diagram. Happy writing. We're just about ready to do our um, rough drafts. So this is kind of getting us set up. If you have this done, you might want to print this out so that when you go to do your rough draft, um, you have a good idea of what to do. You also might want to set, uh, print out your sensory details because that will help you as you're um, doing your rough draft as well. All right. Happy writing. And that's it for today.